alchemy, alchem e. The e in Sumerian refers to the temple. So when I looked up the word fixation, what I found was interesting, and I'll put the picture at the end. Basically, in alchemy, a fixation is the process of reducing a spirit or essence, right? The essence of who you are to permanent bodily form. Fixation, again, reducing a spirit, the spirit or essence of someone to permanent bodily form. Alchemy, all come e. All, the word for pan, meaning all the deities, and pass for pacify, which is a deity, right? to pacify you. You come to E, you focus only on your temple, on survival. Oh, it, 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 there's a lot of good stuff in this video, pay, pay close attention. Coercion, when I looked up coercion, I found a synonym for it, was compulsion. And I'll put at the end pictures that prove my point. Study them carefully. I want to make this short and sweet because I've been very angry recently. Coercion. You get compulsion. Synonym. And a synonym for compulsion I found fixation. Fix-a-shun is the fix for fixation. The root term is fix airy. How do you fix a shun? Airy. Okay. Fixation. The synonyms for fixation was complex and addiction. So first, they use your complex and get you addicted to something. Okay. Then they coerce you. You know, they use compulsion and coercion to get you to behave accordingly. And ultimately, they control the money, the sex, and, and, and reproduction, you know, eugenic control. And part of their goal is to reduce and to eliminate the spirit or the essence to permanent bodily form. These people worship this world, the God of this world, the Elohim, the gods, Enki, Loki, okay, Enlil, on and on, all these deities, Apollo, Zeus, Hades, Pluto, meaning the rich. These are the people that slice the pie. Speaking of slicing the pie, let me take a stab at it to help you kick the habit. Wake up, way Ka up, or the key to be receptive to the spirit that comes from above. So when I consider, what is the difference? What are the obvious differences between me and other people? Look at me carefully. My body structure, even now in this reduced form, is different. Okay. My arms, my back, my shoulders, my hips, my legs, all these things have to do with the torque and the different martial art motions, which have been designed by various systems of this world to fit the temples of those races. Karate favors the Japanese race. American karate favors white Americans. American Taekwondo, white Americans. Taekwondo, Koreans, and so on and so forth. Chinese Kung Fu, the Chinese. How can these systems be spiritual when they're based around the temples of those people? And they don't submit and obey the top martial artists. They're limited by their racial and cultural perspectives. Think about that. I urge you to pause right now, go back to what I've said, write it all down, analyze it, work the angles. Remember, angels and angles. Anyway, so my dad, I've gone over many times, because I can't go over it enough, is a brain surgeon. This is a priceless proof to, that allows people to take me seriously. I am junior, okay? And my mother is a doctor as well. She has a very powerful female brain. My dad has a very powerful male brain. Also, he's very analytical and he, he, he got pretty much all A's. It was because the time he was in that he didn't go to an Ivy League school. Ivy League schools have always been racist. You know, David Starr Jordan, for example, is the eugenicist that is the founding president of Stanford. So during the 60s and 70s, etc., these people did not want black people to come in there, especially very smart black people like my father, and show up the white people. With all due respect, it has to be said. Moving on. So we look at the structure. Okay, This guy does surgery, right? Which requires a certain precision, you know, with scalpels and so on, cutting into people's heads, removing tumors. Okay, Surgical strikes. So imagine somebody who can move quickly and strike surgically. Right? 
fight, he can outmaneuver you and strike you surgically. Okay. Okay. Think about it. Obviously, what I'm doing right now isn't super impressive, but it does show the insightful observer, you know, a little hint of what I was like in my glory. Okay. Surgical strikes, vital spots, the target area, the target board effect. If somebody can strike you right in the middle of your eye, okay, he's a much he's a very dangerous opponent. If he can move faster than everyone else, he's whether or not he can do it at full speed, he's a dangerous opponent. Think about all the angles he can work, all the ways he can break you down and then strike you effectively. Okay? Speed, maneuverability, agility, dexterity slash precision, focus, the nuances in the various forms of focus. When I play basketball and I say, hmm, which way should I go? Partially, um, part of what I'm doing is reading my opponent's mental process and brain function, okay? His energy, if you will, and in martial arts, his spirit, if it is applicable, but really his energy, his temple's energy, okay? So it's, it's interesting because what the psychiatrist does is they use a more moon temple sort of bowl deity, sort of female brain. They use their experience and stature. Right? Over the years, the bowl has gotten big. Right, Over the years, the psychiatrist has gained a certain bit of knowledge. Right, Knowledge, the ability to analyze knowledge versus the ability to analyze life. This is why a lot of females get raped because they are all A students and so on. And they go to Stanford or Yale and they still get raped by fraternities who run around yelling, yes means no and, and, and no means anal or whatever it was. You know, I've gone over that in my other video, I believe. Anyway. So they have this moon temple form of analyzing. And this has to do with consciousness and perception and multitasking. So they're, they're listening to what you're saying. They're taking notes. They then go over these notes later and analyze them. Okay, if that. And they give you, you know, uh, and, and then they, they refine their uh, technique for quote unquote treating the patient. And they're limited to therapy and toxic psychotropic, you know, psychiatric medications. So they're relying on knowledge to cure something that has to do with mind, body, and soul. And even the word fixation, which I've gone over earlier, you know, in its alchemical application, refers to reducing the spirit or essence to a permanent, permanent bodily form. So they're acknowledging that part of the problem when people have fixations and addictions and complexes, right, mental disorders, if you will, you know, is... Uh, uh, based is, is who they really are, the essence of who they are and the spirit that they're in, if you will. So this moon temple analysis clashes with a falcon intense focus that the martial artist has as I'm focusing on who, what, who you are and what you do. You throw a blow, boom, throw another blow, boom. You throw a hook punch, I might step back, okay? Now you've overextended yourself. I might come in, boom, stab you right here. You know, as you turn around, boom, stab you right in the liver. You know, stab you in both eyes. Come across, stab you in the, in the uh, carotid artery. You know, you start gushing blood from all over. Oh, take a step back. I'm faster on my feet. I'm faster on my feet. Good luck trying to strike me while you're gushing blood when I'm faster on my feet and I can block and dodge. Stab you to the stomach, right? Stab you in the kidney, okay? Stab you in the throat. You know, go ahead. Good luck trying to breathe, okay? What does this mean for the person? I can kick you backwards, kick you away from me as you're trying to come in. That's another reason why sparring is so relevant. You know, you're like, you're like, I'm going to try to get you and I kick you in the stomach. Now that I'm focused and you're panicked, it's a walk in the park for a surgical striking straight killer, okay, to break you down and cut you open. All right. Then this has everything to do with focus. When you panic, what keeps me from panicking? Now I've done it. I've stabbed him effectively. He knows his, his clock is ticking. He wants revenge, okay? I have to focus more, not less. It's not enough to stab him at one time. I got to keep my focus and finish him off. Okay? But quite often, as we saw with the, uh, the protest in Anaheim, when somebody stabbed effectively, they go right to the ground and start putting pressure on the wound and they wonder if they're going to die. And on the battlefields, you f find few exceptions to the rule. Anyway. So we also must consider overall brain function versus past based brain function. If somebody drugs you and you can now perform better at construction or whatever task you're doing, okay, 
because you had some, you know, your, your brain is firing in a certain way that didn't, that made it hard for you to, to function and perform. Okay. You've improved that person for that task. But if I can use martial arts to get your brain to correct itself and everything to start functioning effectively, the hippocampus, the striatum, the thalamus, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the, uh, uh, the thalamus, uh, the gray matter, the white matter, everything to start working together, the motor cortex, right? Motor movements, decision making in, in the various parts of the brain, relaying sensory information, the thalamus. If I get all these components of the brain to start working together effectively, I can heal you without reducing overall brain function, without these side effects. Okay, so why don't they go this route? Well, part of the reason is martial arts are integrated martial sciences outside of my system, really. You know, they're trying to find a scientific way to snake the pharaoh and to make themselves look good. Demonstration, demonstration, presentation, okay? Pro sun a shun. The T is a feminine suffix. Presentation. Okay. Of course, the falcon flies high. It's associated with the sun. Khan Hor, Khan Su is a moon deity. So they try to also replace the sun with the moon. So when we look at this thing, we have the top martial artists at the highest level of male brain function, right? Focused, righteous intensity. Okay. We have the average high school basketball player somewhere between him and a female nerd in high school, we'll say. Okay. And she, she's doing good. She's, she's a very effective female brain, but a very ineffective male brain. The basketball player, average high school basketball player, he's not too good. You know, he's all right. Okay. He's starting to hone that male brain through basketball. Okay. He's not the same as martial arts. Okay. And he, he has a fairly effective female brain. The top martial artist, it is painful for him to do activities that involve the female brain unless perhaps there are attractive females working with him. So you see the spectrum and you see how you know certain activities favor certain types of people. Ultimately, I believe the schoolwork favors females. The LGBT community believes it favors a more balanced brain. But when we look at this you know, society, we see all these effeminate scientists and nerds and so on and so forth. They have a Sumerian form of intelligence, right? Sumer, Babylon, cuneiform, where the first forms of writing are said to come from. Okay, before that, obviously, there were symbols and so on and so forth, but a fixation on writing and going that way with it and creating written words, okay, was more of a Sumerian female brain. So ultimately, they want you to go to this worldly form of intelligence, which is the female form of intelligence, and this has implications in sexual intercourse versus making love, okay? And who who's hurting who and why? Well, the man's on top, you know, he, he's, he's, she might say it hurts and slow down or whatever. When the woman's on top, she might bend his dick. So, you know, if she's not submissive, she's more likely to hurt him if she's on top. So, you know, the, you know, these things have to be said, they have to be covered and I'm the guy to do it now, you know. So I'm running out of time and I want to put the pictures at the end. So let's just leave it there. I urge you to watch this video again. There's a lot of ideas that are very important. Remember coercion leads to compulsion. The synonym for coercion is compulsion. The synonym for compulsion is fixation. The synonym for fixation is complex and addiction. Okay, when I looked it up. So in other words, a simil a, ultimately a synonym for coercion is complex and addiction. They use your complexes and addictions to coerce you. This is why we, we look at this thing, right? Forcible rape, very obvious form of rape. An army leveraging the fact that they're there. Hey, you better date these guys and marry them or you're going to have life hard. It's a force, form of coercion. There's economic and financial coercion. A company taking corporations coming together to take advantage of a bad economy to then get women to marry and date pet people like them because, and take advantage of their, their gold digging nature, their addictions, their complexes. Thank you.